Welcome to another light reading telecom innovator video where we are introducing you to some of the people and companies that are help uh, helping move the global communications industry forward. Uh, my name is Phil Harvey. I'm an editor here at Light Reading. And uh, today I'm joined on the presentation by Steve Plain from Amdocs. Hi, Steve. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well. Thanks, Phil. Nice to meet you. Good to, good to be on with you. And we are uh, talking about the public cloud and OSS. And, um, you know, clearly in the industry, uh, the telecom industry has seen the advantage of running applications in the public cloud. Uh, you get additional scalability, you get agility, you can, you know, adjust your capacity on demand, resource optimization, all the, all the good things about the cloud. Um, but traditionally, uh, telcos and communication service providers generally are not keen on putting their OSS in the cloud, their operational support systems. It's a, it's a, it's almost the crown jewels of the company, kind of. Um, ha has that changed? And are there now more um, CSPs willing to go there in terms of exploring the public cloud for uh, for their OSS? Yeah, thanks, Phil. I, I sort of see a two-speed journey as far as the telco guys are concerned. There's the IT business side of telco and the OSS networky side. And generally, the closer you get to that network side, the more conservative the businesses become. Uh, and also, as you said, telco is a bit of a uh, sort of slower to adopt, maybe a bit more of a follower, more cautious, mm -hmm. and especially in that OSS network space where the telcos really want to maintain their high service availability and worry about you know, any uh, compromising of it. But I do see trickle down. So you know, the cloud is becoming more widely adopted. Reliability is more proven, security is more proven. And we now see quite a lot of evidence of the IT side of the business going to the cloud. You know, AT&T with Azure, Vodafone, AWS, Orange and Google for analytics. So I think we're now starting to see telco OSS starting to follow. We see Vodafone and Google for those OSS analytics, TEF Germany with AWS, uh, DISH have made some really you know, bold announcements of what they're going to be doing. So, so I think they are now more willing. I think really it's because that perceived risk of going to cloud is reducing. It's simply more proven now. Yeah, that's a great point, though, about, you know, once the IT side of the house goes over, that does build their yeah. confidence, that does, uh, uh, you know, kind of, they can, gives them something to observe and to sort of see how it works. And then when they observe those efficiencies, they start, you know, formulating, because <laughs> telcos are good at this as well, wringing cost out of every other part of the business and, you know, getting that Absolutely. efficiency. Yeah, and they can um, trust what they hear, right, from that side of the house. Which yeah, really indeed. Um, yeah, and and good good point about bringing up Dish because that's that's another one that I think the, the industry is watching very carefully to see, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, how they how they progress, but also they're starting with more or less a clean slate, you know, mostly a greenfield network, so that will hopefully teach the whole industry some things about, you know, how how to uh, rebuild these things on more modern architectures. Um, but enough about that. Let's talk about some of the challenges that are there, because clearly it's still a concern. Um, so what key challenges, uh, you know, from Amdocs experiences are CSPs facing when they're uh, deploying OSS in the cloud? Sure. Yeah, a number of things come to mind, Phil. Um, I think one of the first ones is, you know, you really need to balance the people, processes and technology. Often people get lost in the technology and forget about the people and processes, which are equally important. Um, there's unexpected costs. Cloud measures cost differently to the internal on-prem IT systems. So it's often consumption-based, CPU memory, IO, cloud services you use. So it means you need to look at your solutions quite differently to evaluate the best approach. There's data sovereignty, compliance issues. You know, countries, countries have different rules, service providers have different policies, and each cloud vendor has different capabilities. Uh, impact, if you put one app in the cloud, one, one bit of your OSS, what happens to all the others? How, how do they interoperate? Um, and I think one size doesn't fit all. Every app will probably have different parts move, maybe at different rates and so on. So, so I think that's something you have to consider. And finally, there's best of breed versus as a service. What I mean there is, you know, if, if you've got, say, your favorite security application you want to use, it might not be available in the cloud. They offer great as a service capabilities and they're probably well 
capable of doing what you need, but you have to be ready to compromise. You have to be ready to accept using the cloud services because that's where you get the benefits and the costs, you know, and not just taking your best of breed with you. So you have to be ready to do that. Yeah, no, that's a good, good uh, summation of kind of the unexpected cost or sort of the things that are, um, you know, that are variable that you would have to watch when yeah. you're, when you're pursuing that line. Um, so how does Amdocs help service providers in this area? How do they help address the challenges that they're going to uh, in, invariably face when they're um, yeah. looking at migrating the OSS to the cloud? Yeah, you know, if, you know, just from what we've said so far, we can see that you know migrating OSS is complex, that there are many options, there are many risks. Obviously, there's great benefits as well. And I think the biggest thing Amdocs brings is its proven experience. You know, we've worked with many operators, with different products, different solutions, and we've got many production solutions in the cloud already. And what that means really is that we're just really well placed to be a good guide for the operator on this journey to cloud. You know, it's not a one-stop shop. You know, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to do it over multiple years. It's a transformation, you know, not just a single deployment. Yeah, you know, we can help select the best journey. We've got the we can uh, give advice on how best to deploy certain products, including our own, obviously, but third parties as well. We can help with those trade-offs that we've talked about and maybe recommend different cloud vendors or different services from different cloud vendors, you know, depending on what you want to do. So and maybe more importantly, and all of them, we can actually help the operator have realistic expectations on what's going to happen and what he's going to get and what, and therefore, actually make sure we deliver on those expectations, you know, rather than hype, which uh, which is very hard to match in the in reality. So I think overall, I think good guidance is key to getting OSS on the cloud successfully. And because of that experience Amdocs has, we're in a pretty strong position to help. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think for the service providers, definitely having a trusted advisor to kind of guide them along the process mm -hmm. definitely um, gets them there. But let's also talk about new technology. So Amdocs recently announced the availability of its new uh, cloud native NG OSS. Um, can you provide an update on what this is and what it's, uh, you know, and, and give us a bit more about its uh, its cloud deployment capabilities because that's yeah. that's kind of the central theme here. Yeah, sure can, Phil. Uh, so we've just recently launched Neo, as you suggest. It's a sort of a culmination of our own cloud journey that we've been going through with our products. Um, so it's a complete next-gen OSS portfolio, and it's ready to manage and orchestrate hybrid networks, whether they be cloud or physical. And the Neo suite includes a designer to manage a, a catalog of the definition of services and processes. It's got catalog-driven orchestrators, um, inventory. It's got that live view of this you know, virtual and cloud-based resources that are used within the services. And it's got assurance capabilities where we're using advanced ML to deal with this closed loop in this uh, service lifecycle. But all of it, as you sort of alluded to, is now built on cloud native principles. It's been a big re-architecture. So it's containerized microservices, DevOps, AI, ML, all, all those good buzzwords, but deployed live. And maybe an important thing also is that it's cloud agnostic. So we run on all three, whether it's AWS, Google, or Azure, you know, we can deploy on all three. We're, we're not tied in to anyone in specifically. That's a that, that's an interesting um, uh, thing to bring up too. It's like, not only do you have the technology, not only is it cloud native, and like you said, it ticks all the boxes for the new yeah. buzzwords, but but also that you have these partnerships with the hyperscale cloud providers, mm -hmm. um, you know, because that that's obviously going to help with the onboarding and with the sort of understanding of you know what the service provider needs to get going, mm -hmm. um, kind of to dovetail along with that, does Amdocs offer services that help service providers support moving their OSS to the cloud? Yeah, it's a really good point, Phil. And um, some again, a bit like we mentioned right at the beginning, you can get lost in the technology and not deal with those people in processes, right? And so Amdocs does wrap a comprehensive set of services around this Neo platform and helps making the service providers move their, uh, or helping them move their OSS to the cloud successfully. And, you know, and looking at that, we've got telecom specific cloud consultancy from Kenzen, an Amdocs consulting company. We do offer solution design and development services, systems migration, 
traditional solution deployment, you know, just actually, you know, delivering it on. And we can do managed operations. We can do it at the tail end as well of actually run it as a managed service, maybe build, transfer, operate, you know, whatever the operator wants to do. And finally, we do some business transformation to help them, you know, new, new process adoption and reskilling. So I think we offer a pretty comprehensive suite of services to the cloud. And we can support, you know, all the different aspects of that long and complex cloud journey. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a important to bring out too. New process adoption is is yeah. is something that that I think a, a lot of uh, you know service providers who've been doing things a certain way over a certain period of time need help with because it it, it is a different working environment. You know, uh, dealing with yeah. the cloud. Um, it, it, you know, it's a completely a completely different uh, you know mindset, I guess. Uh, you know, in, in everything else. So mm -hmm. I I we're, uh, we're almost out of time, but I can't let you off the hook until. Yeah. I get you to provide me, uh, you know, an example uh, and maybe more examples of uh, service providers you've worked with to successfully deploy their OSS in the cloud. Sure, uh, let's do. Got two quick examples, Phil. Yeah, there's one one on AWS. So APAC Tier One, where we deployed on the cloud you know, five years ago. We deployed on the cloud with them. Uh, they they wanted to do accelerate new service deployment and generate a more digital customer experience. It was enterprise and consumer. And Amdoc's role was around service orchestration and fulfillment, you know, what, probably what you'd expect, our core business. Uh, you know, some learnings out of that, we found that the volume of transactions on that fulfillment process was high and expected, impacted costs and design. You know, that was a learning along the way. Uh, some real benefits they saw was they found the ability to uh, use that elastic cloud about doing ad hoc uh, deployments and so on, really valuable. And that was one of the traditional benefits, but it happened for real. And the other thing, which is less talked about actually, was the blue-green um, cloud deployment process around upgrades, which meant that they were able to do a lot more upgrades and had a lot less downtime. So we've done multiple um, upgrades and deployments with them and they've been much smoother than using maybe more traditional software development methods. So that's been pretty successful in production for five or so years now. A slightly different one is a global satellite operator and there they wanted to do uh, tr process transformation in their business and, and deploy new SD-WAN services uh, uh, on a global basis. Their target was Azure this time, so they wanted to do Azure. And actually, they were deploying the VNFs and the CNFs on the Azure platform as well. So it was uh, not just about OSS, it was actually the uh, network as well. And there, they were using the Azure Global Network for transporting data around, not, not just hosting things, but actually customer data uh, transport. Um, some of the benefits there, they started using a standard, you know, off the shelf open source Kubernetes environment. Then they moved over to the Azure uh, native version, AKS, and they found big improvements of resources and performance and ease of operation. So, so I think, you know, you see uh, with both those examples, sort of, you know, two different views on, on how the, um, how different operators have used the solution and got benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that too, because it's it's two different operators using two completely different cloud platforms and then doing different things, you know, with their business with respect to sort of where they started from. I, I think that's important for operators to hear too, because it, it you know, the, the one thing that telcos kind of come back to is that even though they're all kind of grouped together in the thing, their networks are, you know, entirely unique to, you know, each yeah, individual telco. They're all same, but different, right? So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so they have unique challenges along the way. And I, I think that's a great place to end it on um, because, uh, you know, what we're trying to get across here is that, you know, Amdocs is looking at both the challenges, it has the technology, and it's also offering the services to, you know, get them from point A to point B. Um, Steve Plain, thanks so much for your time today. I do appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate uh, spending time with you today, Phil. It's been great.